Every input lag figure you have read or watched in LED LCD TV reviews has been a big fat lie because it doesn't tell the whole story about gaming responsiveness. Let me explain why. Here, I've set up an OLED TV on your left and an LED LCD TV on your right. If I measure the input lag on both televisions, you can see that the OLED is slightly faster than the LED LCD at both 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. But hopefully you will agree with me that the difference is negligible. It's certainly not night and day. But wait, if we use a slow motion camera to capture the aiming down sights in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on both TVs, you can see that the OLED not only looks clearer, it's also quicker than the LED LCD in completing the action. So what's going on here? The answer lies in a display attribute known as pixel response time. And unlike input lag, there's actually a massive difference in the pixel response times of OLED versus LED LCD. I've previously mentioned pixel response time in passing in some of my OLED TV reviews. The self-emissive technology's near-instantaneous pixel response time. OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time. But I'm going to explain why there's such a big difference between the pixel response times of OLED and LED LCD, and how it affects your gaming experience. If we put a USB microscope on any television, you can see that the screen is actually made up of millions of pixels. Almost 8.3 million to be exact on a 4K TV. The video content you see on screen therefore consists of all these pixels changing from one color to another. And pixel response time is how long it takes to transition from one color to another. To measure the pixel response times, I authored this test pattern with a mostly white background containing a flashing box in the middle of the screen. This is to minimize any further delay introduced by local dimming which cannot be disabled on this LED LCD TV. Then, using an oscilloscope, I placed a 1 nanosecond photo detector on the flashing patch to plot a graph, also known as an oscillogram, of how the pixels changed from black to white. This is the oscillogram we've recorded for the OLED, whereas this one is for the LED LCD. Compared side by side, the OLED clearly completed the transition from black to white quicker than the LED LCD. But by how much? Well, we can actually measure the rise time between two markers on these oscillograms. And using the industry standard of 10% to 90% rise time, the pixel response time on the LED LCD was calculated to be around 18 milliseconds, while on the OLED, the figure was only 620 microseconds, or 0.62 milliseconds, which means that the OLED is almost 30 times quicker than the LED LCD when changing from one color to another. In other words, by the time an LED LCD pixel has finished switching colors, an OLED pixel can already switch colors nearly 30 times if necessary. This discrepancy in pixel response time is unsurprising when you understand how OLEDs and LED LCDs work. OLED is an emissive display technology, which means that every pixel can light up in a near instantaneous manner once voltage is applied across the organic materials. On the other hand, LED LCD is a transmissive display technology, the light that you see on screen is the result of liquid crystals filtering or even blocking the backlight, and it takes longer to rotate the liquid crystals in a certain orientation after receiving electrical current. If the way OLED produces light is like flicking on a light switch, then LED LCD is like opening a set of blinds to let some light in, resulting in a slower pixel response time. To use another analogy, OLED is like snapping your fingers instantly, whereas LED LCD is like Thanos going through the power search from completing the Infinity Stones. <sighs> then saying, I am inevitable before snapping his fingers. In fact, a pixel response time of 18 milliseconds on this LED LCD TV was actually slower than the frame draw time of 16.67 milliseconds at 60 Hz let alone the frame draw time of 8.33 milliseconds at 120Hz, which means that there would be additional smearing and ghosting, because the pixels couldn't switch fast enough to keep up with the frame rate demands. To demonstrate this, 
I've ordered a test pattern containing these four slides that switched from one to the next at both 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. I fed the test pattern to both TVs using an OnQ RZ50 receiver, which functions as an HDMI 2.1 splitter, and then filmed the results using a slow motion camera at 1000 frames per second. With the test pattern being sent at 60 frames per second, you can see that the OLED presented every slide in such a clean manner, as each frame was drawn from top to bottom. On the LED LCD, however, there's more residual text visible throughout. For example, if we pause the footage here. This is due to the slower response time of the LED LCD. The pixels simply couldn't switch fast enough before the next frame needed to be drawn. And when I sent my test pattern at 120 frames per second, this LED LCD TV also started throwing in some backlight scanning in an attempt to reduce motion smearing. But there's still more residual text than the OLED anyway, since backlight scanning alone won't make the pixel response time quicker. Translated to actual gameplay, the faster pixel response time of OLED resulted in not only less ghosting and after images than LED LCD, but also lower end-to-end -end system latency. NVIDIA has actually developed a nifty device to measure system latency. It's called LDAT, which stands for Latency Display Analysis Tool. Just like the Leo Botna tester, there's a photo sensor at the back, but what's different is that there's a button on the LDAT device. Pressing the button will simulate a mouse click and trigger a flash in the software which can then be picked up by the photo sensor allowing you to measure the latency from the moment the mouse is clicked, which is then processed by the CPU, the operating system or OS, the game application, the GPU before being rendered and shown on the display. NVIDIA has even designed an auto-fire function with programmable delay into the software to reduce manual errors and minimize variability. NVIDIA themselves recommended 100 runs, so we used the auto-fire function to carry out 100 LDAT measurements on the OLED, which was set to 4K 60Hz resolution in HDR game mode. While waiting for the 100 runs to complete, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crapdale More Leeds for their help in supplying the TVs used in this comparison video. If you are thinking about getting a new television, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113-244-6607, mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Right, so after 100 measurements, OLED's average end-to-end -end system latency came to 44.6 milliseconds. If we carried out the same measurements on the LED LCD TV, 100 measurements at 4K 60Hz in HDR game mode would yield an average end-to-end -end system latency of almost 10 milliseconds higher than the OLED, even though the difference when measured using traditional input lag methodologies was less than 1 millisecond. The additional latency was therefore caused by LED LCD's slower pixel response time, since all other variables, the LDAT device, the PC, the GPU, and the software were the same. Besides increasing system latency, LED LCD's slower pixel response time also contributed to more noticeable motion smearing and ghosting, as you can see in this slow motion side-by-side -side comparison of color boxes moving across a grey background filmed at 1000 frames per second. The darker the background, the longer it takes for the pixels to switch to a brighter color, and vice versa which is why it's not uncommon to see smearing and ghosting artifacts when playing games containing dark scenes on an LED LCD display. At the end of the day, OLED's significantly quicker pixel response time makes it a superior display to even the best LED LCD TVs for playing games. OLED can deliver higher motion clarity and lower end-to-end -end system latency, and that's not even taking into account how engaging game mode to cut down input light affects the picture quality of these two display technologies. I've previously done a side-by-side -side comparison video, so go watch it here. There's some foreplay involved.